Hello, everybody, and welcome to Uncle Todd for Christ. Thank you for joining me today, guys, on this Hallelujah Friday, January the 5th, 2024. It is 4.45 p.m. Eastern Time as I'm speaking and recording. Praying you guys are having an amazing week, no matter what day of the week it is. Mine happens to be Friday. How about you? Could be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Every day is a day the Lord has made. Amen. So continue praises for each and every single one of you. To God be the glory for choosing you, for using you, for just being with you. Amen to that. But guys, thank you so much for joining me. Today's title, A Peace Invoking Response. A Peace Invoking Response. In our scriptures today, Old Testament again, folks, God's speaking to me because I told you before, I'm not well-versed in the Old Testament. I truly love reading the New Testament where it's Jesus speaking mostly. I love the red letter stuff, guys. I truly do. But again, I love the entire word of God. I am just not that familiar with a lot of the Old Testament stories and uh, scriptures. But today we are in Judges chapter 6, verses, I read through this. Verse 12 is the, the lead off verse. I've got highlighted today, 11 through 16, talking about Gideon. Guys, if you're like me and not familiar, read, read on it, study on it so you know a little bit. Don't don't just shrug it off and be like, eh, well, that didn't speak to me. We should never, ever be like that with the word of God. You don't know. Just read, guys. I read it slowly. A cup man, it just it just jumped out at me what, what God's trying to say to us. And he will do the same thing with you if you have that patience and you have that hunger for his word. Amen. Um, so Judges 6, 11 through 16, and Judges 6, 12 reads this. The Lord is with you. You mighty man of fearless courage. Talking about Gideon. And this excerpt is out of my cup runneth over. I've heard of that before. Uh, this is what it says today. In our eyes, Gideon doesn't seem like a man of courage. After all, he's beating out his wheat in a wine press, hiding himself, his task, and his produce from the raiding Midianites. And here, God is calling him a mighty man of fearless courage. So Gideon is hiding. He's down in a wine press, down in a, I believe, down in a, um, a dugout press in the ground. He's down there thrashing his wheat, doing that, so he can't be seen. Sounds like a coward. Sounds like a chicken in human standards, correct? God's calling him a man of fearless courage. Let's read on. How off base can God be? He didn't. I think that is a sarcastic question. How about you guys? Um, but... As he shows us time and time again, God knows who he created us to be. No matter what we think God created us to be or do, it's what God says he created us to be. And then we just got to so, so surrender him, submit to him, and just listen and just communicate with God daily. Um, it's what we sometimes need to have our value called out. A disturbed Gideon responds to God with questions we've all probably asked him at some point. Please, my Lord. If the Lord is with us, with us, why then has all this happened to us? We, I think we probably have all said that, believers and non-believers alike. God, if you love me so much, then why is this happening, Lord? Why is this happening? Why has this happened to me? Why have you taken this with guys? We've, we've done there, done, done there, been that, been there, done that. Amen. Um, and where are all his wonderful deeds that our fathers recounted? But God doesn't answer, Gideon. Gideon's questions. Instead, he tells him, go in this might of yours and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Do I not send you? Gideon asked God, how can I, of all people, save my country? There's Gideon not realizing that God is with him. God is saying, I'm not going to set you up. God is not going to set you up to fail. God will not do that. Satan may tell you that God did that, that God, if God loved you, you would not have failed. That's a lie. We have such a loving, amazing father. He will never put you in a situation that he is not going to walk through you and get you through it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Um, when Gideon looks at himself, he doesn't see what God sees. Folks, take that sentence. When Gideon looks at himself, repent. Place your name in there. When you look at yourself, do you see what God sees? I know I don't. I'm, I'm guessing you guys probably don't either. Again, you know, we've said in the past that that mirror, that's really not you. That's the vessel you're in. Understand that, that your outward appearance is this your container. The power, it's the spirit inside of you. It's God, it's Christ in you. 
that is your true being that does and accomplishes these things through your faith, through God's grace and mercy, him working in you through these vessels that we need to do these things on earth. Amen. We need a vessel and we need God's power to bind into things. Unstoppable, folks. Thank you, Jesus. Um, Gideon sees his clan as being the weakest and he himself being the least in his father's house. Kind of reminds me like when they sent the spies and spying on the promised land, they come back all but two. All but two said, man, we're like crickets. Those them, them people are giants. We're like grasshoppers compared to these giants. All but two. All but two. And they knew that God was with them. All kinds of these stories in the Bible, folks. Here is where we and Gideon are given the gift of God's peace-invoking response. A wondrous truth that makes all the difference in his life and ours. And this is Judges 6.16 in the ESV. But I will be with you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And that's out of my cup runneth over. No quotes, no prayers today, guys. It's going to be another short, sweet one. Just a reminder, you know, and a lot of people have asked and I've asked, you know, how do I know it's God's voice? How do I know this is what God wants me to do? How, guys, how much time are you spending with God? How much of God's word are you getting in here and in here? And how much of the world are you getting in here? You got to balance this stuff out. If you're getting more of the world in you and not as much of the word of God as we need to be, you're going to have a lot harder time distinguishing and discerning the voice of God. But if you surrender to him, you spend as much time as you possibly can throughout your normal day. I mean, we've been given responsibilities. We're blessed to have these things with family, with careers, with school, whatever it may be. But we said, you know, a few weeks ago in the other devotional, there should never be downtime. There should never be any uh, um, boring time in our, the, the life of a Christian. Every single free minute you have should be spent communicating with God. Talk with him while you're fixing dinner. Talk with him while you're going to bed, when you're waking up, when you're in the bathroom, brushing your teeth. He listens to the heart anyway, guys. You don't have to, you don't have to physically talk out, but I, I highly encourage it. But just knowing that God, remember God judges the heart. He sees the heart because that's where the Holy Spirit resides in us. God can use these vessels, God. And there are so many stories in the Bible about God taking somebody that the world would look at as worthless and not even, there's no way possible you're going to be able to do this and completely pull it off flawlessly. Why? Because that's how awesome God is. So again, guys, a peace invoking response. I will be with you. Just knowing that God is with you and in you. Folks, it's just, it's just, it's just beautiful. I love it. So guys, until tomorrow, Saturday the 6th, calling for snow here. We'll see. Doesn't change my relationship with Jesus. How about you? But we will see what he brings down from the skies. I'm looking forward to some of the pretty white stuff. But until tomorrow on Saturday the 6th, guys, enjoy the rest of your day. And we will see what the Lord says then. I love you all.